A common bi-quad filter structure is shown here that is realized using three op amps. We can have two outputs, one the band pass filter output and the other one at the very end, the low pass filter output. So we can have both of them. What we want to prove is, for example, for the V, v out, low pass, uh, divide by V in basically transfer function from the very input to the very output. The transfer function looks like a constant divided by a second order polynomial in S in which omega naught is the natural frequency and Q is the quality factor of the filter. Basically, omega naught divided by Q is the bandwidth of the filter um, that is considered, whether it's a bandpass or low pass filter. So we want to find it quickly. Notice that the one that in the, in the center is just uh, because R5I5 is repeated, uh, so the gain from this point, basically, the gain from this point to this point is just negative 1. This works as an inverter with a gain of negative 1. Uh, so it works as a buffer effectively, and uh, we have that in place so that <clears throat> the inverting uh, bandpass filter shows up at the very beginning, if you, and if you want the non-inverting one, you can actually grab from this point, and you have, because it will be multiplied by negative one, you will have a non-inverting version of it. So let's find the V out low pass divided by V in a transfer function. So to do that, um, there is a quick way to do it, and that quick way is uh, writing a KCL at this node would be the fastest one. So at this node, we are assuming that the three op amps are ideal, linearly biased, properly biased, meaning that the supply voltages are applied properly so that op amps, all of them, are in linear region of operation. They are not saturated. Because of that, virtual short is valid, and therefore the voltage at the positive and negative input terminals of op amp should be the same. So in the positive terminal, we have zero volt. Therefore, at negative terminal, we should have zero as well as long as virtual short is valid. Okay, so let's write the KCL at this point. There is a current that is coming in, which is V in minus zero divided by R1. That current, according to KCL, or Kirchhoff current law, should be equal to the current, the, three, the sum of the three currents that are going out through these branches. So let's just write it. Um, so I would say uh, KCL at input node, so KCL, at negative input uh, of the first op amp. So this is op amp number one. So I'm talking about KCL at, let's say, um, input, negative input of op amp number one. And to do that, we have, so V in minus zero divided by R1, basically just V in divided by R1 should be equal to these two impedances, R3 and 1 over C1S, they are in parallel. And uh, obviously we know that, I'm just going to write it quickly here, but it's well known, R3 in parallel with 1 over C, C1S, you get R3 plus 1 over C1s divided by R3, uh, R3 times C 1 over C1s divided by R3 plus 1 over C1s. In summary, you get this one, R3, R3, C1s plus 1. So that is the parallel of the two impedances you have on the feedback loop for the first op amp. So what I can say, I can immediately write the sum of these two current in the sense that I can say 0 minus the voltage here. Let's name this Vx for now, the voltage there. So 0 minus Vx divide by the impedance of the parallel of R3 and C1, which is the one that I have written here. So it's going to be R3 divide by R3 C1s plus 1. And uh, then there is the next current that is remaining. So that takes care of the two current uh, we have through R3 and C1. Now the remaining current is the one that goes on top branch, through top branch, and through R3. So for that one, I have 0 minus, 0 is one side of R2, the other side is V out, low pass filter. Okay, and uh, then divide by R2. Okay, uh, one interesting thing is from Vx, as we expected through this, um, 
op amp number two, middle op amp. I know it's as we discussed because R5 is repeated. It's just an inverting op operation amplifier here. So Vx become negative Vx here. And then from negative Vx to the output is very simple. You have an inverting amplifier that you, you have also, a, a, for that we have a C2 as the feedback impedance. So um, this is obviously working as a integrator or low pass filter. You can write the gain from negative Vx to V out this way. So from negative Vx uh, to V out, we have this relationship. It's uh, just inverting out amplifier in which you can write. Let me put it this way. V out low pass divided by input, which is negative Vx, should be equal to 1 over C2s, which is the feedback loop negative. And because for an inverting amplifier, we have negative uh, impedance of the feedback loop divide by and then R4 or whatever impedance you have here. So one, minus one over C2S divided by R4. So what I'm trying to say is this gives you the idea that, um, let me shift this the other way. Let me shift this to here. Okay. Now V out low pass filter, which is the very output divided by Vx is equal to one over R4 C2 S. That is what I was trying to get to. So the interesting thing is from this node, let me highlight it using different color. From this node, Vx, to the very output, you only have one over R4 C2S that is multiplying it. So what I'm going to do is from this point on, I am going to substitute Vx with what I have here. So this is giving me the idea that Vx is simply R4 C2 S times V out. That is the important equation I'm going to utilize. And I'm going to substitute Vx I have here using that one. So therefore, in summary, what I get, let me go back to my black color. So here you have V in divided by R1 equal to negative Vx and divide by this thing, which is, let me keep it as it is. So uh, negative Vx divided by this thing and negative Vx, I'm going to uh, substitute Vx with R4 C2S times V out. So R4 C2S huh, divide by R3 divide by R3 C1S plus one and then times V out. I'm, I'm going to factor that out because the second one also has V out, the second term here. So minus 1 over R2. And the whole thing is multiplied by V out. So in summary, V out, and then reshuffling this equation by bringing V into the other side to denominator. So V out divided by V in is equal to now we have to move this one to the other side. It's a busy one, but it's all right. So what we're going to get, it's going to be when you shuffle things around and make them uh, a bit neater, you end up with this outcome that uh, you have minus R2 over R1. And uh, then you have this outcome, 1 over R2, R4, C1, uh, C2, enumerator, after you reshuffle things around and uh, make it neater. So you end up with this outcome, divide by S squared plus 1 over R3, C1, S plus 1 over plus 1 over R2, R4, C1, C2. So we basically got to what we wanted, meaning that if I just highlight this outcome, the output to input transfer function for the very output, which is the low pass filter output, is effectively a constant, 
sort of a gain, negative r2 over r1, a constant in numerator, and then divide by s squared plus a constant, a coefficient times s, which is exactly what we were looking for, plus another constant. But why we can rewrite it this way is because I can, I'm can. i going to assume that 1 over r2, um, r4, c1, c2, which, is, which appears both in the numerator and denominator as my um, natural frequency squared. So let's make name it as omega naught or omega zero squared equal to one over r2 r4 c1 c2 so that's one parameter and uh, given what you have for the coefficient of s which is this coefficient one over r3 c1 effectively you can write that you can write this coefficient in the form of so you can write uh, one over r3 c1 as omega naught, the natural frequency, divided by quality factor, in which, because omega naught squared is defined this way, uh, quality factor, therefore, effectively has to be uh, this value. By the way, quality factor is uh, what we are all familiar with, is inverse of um, 1 over basically 2 times, um, let me just make sure I'm not missing something here. So uh, the quality factor is 1 over 2 times zeta, in which this zeta is the damping coefficient, so damping constant. Now, uh, with that in mind, and this is used to understand whether we have oscillation in the circuit or not. So um, with that in mind, uh, let me just uh, write what you would get if you do this um, renaming, and you get R3 over r square root of r2 r4 times square root of c1 c2. Why this matters? Because when you want to select the value of the resistors and capacitors in this circuit, which are not that many, you have r1, r2, r3, r4, and r4, um, and c1 and c2 effectively, then it affects because your choice will affect the quality and also the natural frequency and also the bandwidth when you see um, omega naught over q that's effectively the bandwidth of your filter um, by definition of the quality factor quality factor is um, omega naught over the bandwidth so um, you can define the bandwidth of interest or the 3 dB bandwidth of interest for your filter and your quality factor or your natural frequency by proper selection of the filter parameters. Um, obviously, uh, if uh, zeta or let's say the um, damping constant is one, you would say you are critically damped. If it is a number uh, more than one, you would say you are over damped. And if it is a number less than one, you will end up with com complex conjugate poles and you will say it's uh, under damped. Uh, uh, circuit. So uh, this is the kind of circuit you get. Why this is a low-pass filter? Obviously, when s goes to infinity, meaning that you substitute s with j omega, and when you do that, since the denominator is a second order of s, when s goes to infinity, denominator goes to infinity, the transfer function goes to zero. So this filter at the very output does not pass any high-frequency component that comes from input. When s is zero or j omega, omega is zero. When you're dealing with a DC injection, of course, s squared and uh, s goes away in denominator, and then you end up with simple DC gain of negative R2 over R1. So negative R2 over R1 defines your DC gain in the system from input to the very output. Um, so you can see that DC passes through. It's a low pass filter. Why this, uh, in the first output of the first op amp is the band pass? Well, obviously, as we discussed, you're talking about Vx. So when you, find, when you found here, what you found here, you just found that V out low pass over V in is equal to this equation, which is what, we, what was written on top, constant divided by S squared plus omega naught over Q times S plus omega S squared. Well, we just use this equation that we found to relate the uh, vx to v out so if you want to do that then all all we need to do is we need to multiply both sides of this equation by r for c to s so effectively uh, all i need to say is vx divided by 
Vn, of course, these are S domain functions because we are talking about S domain. Uh, the transfer function from input to V out um, B or uh, the bandpass filter output is just uh, whatever you saw here times R4C2S. That's it. So it will be, again, you're dealing with a negative, let's say, uh, R2 over R1. And uh, then you have um, R4C2S. So you have R4C2S. And uh, then you have your uh, so this is let me keep let me keep s outside so that it looks nicer and of course we have omega naught squared so you have omega naught squared and then you have s that's a numerator of the transfer function denominator is same as what you have here so s squared plus omega naught over q s as we named it we named one over r3 c1 as omega naught over q and then plus omega naught squared natural frequency and the uh, quality factor of the filter or omega naught over q is the bandwidth of the filter now you can see that in denominator still you have a second order polynomial in s but then in numerator you have a first order and it is pure s when you are dealing with dc s is set to uh, j omega equal to zero omega is zero for dc and you can see that as soon as s is zero the whole transfer function is zero dc doesn't pass through um, to get to b out but then when S goes to infinity as an indication of super high frequency, denominator uh, gets more dominant than numerator and therefore uh, the whole thing goes to zero again. So this thing is not passing low at, at, at E out B, is not passing low frequency component, is not passing high frequency component. It's basically a bandpass filter. So if you uh, do the body plot for magnitude response of say, um, so if you do 20 log base 10 of absolute value of the transfer function, meaning absolute value of Vx over V in, in terms of omega, uh, and plot it versus omega, you see something like this. So it uh, goes like this, and then at some point has, has a peaking, that's a bandpass filter response. And then because you have effectively two poles, it, it would start uh, dropping and and ultimately it would do as fast as 40 dB per decade. So initially it goes at 20 dB per decade up, hits the peak, then it starts 20 dB per decade down. Um, sorry, let me just make sure I'm not missing something. So it will start dropping 20 dB per decade ultimately, because ultimately you have one dominant uh, pole in the system. So 20 dB per decade going up initially, get to a peak, and then 20 dB per decade going down ultimately. It's a bandpass filter, and uh, omega naught indicates the peak of the filter, and then 3 dB bandwidth is the bandwidth of the filter defined by 1 over R3C1 um, in the transfer function of the bandpass filter. For the low-pass filter version at the output, you don't have this scheme for body plot. What you have is similar scheme, except that since there is nothing except constant in numerator, uh, the highest value at S equal to 0 is defined by the DC gain, and then see, uh, beyond that, you just keep dropping. So initially, maybe 20 dB per decade, then 40 dB per decade, because you have two dominant poles in the system. That is the low-pass filter response in terms of magnitude body plot. And then this is the bandpass filter response. I hope that this is helpful in terms of understanding by quad filter structure that is shown here, sometimes referred to as uh, Tau Thomas um, so uh, filter structure or topology. So this is a well-known practical structure that is used in practice.